kind of get vengeance against the city of Stout. Um, and actually, while we're doing this episode, because this episode is mostly going to be us training up a little bit. We got to get ready. Um, so they need to work on their skills anyway. So we're actually kind of sitting at, at, the, at our max, with the exception once Ellis finishes this one. So while we do some of the more mundane things, I actually want to take an opportunity to talk to you guys about the we call it check and kind of what I, from my understanding, what what the lore behind them is. Now, don't take this as a hundred percent uh, gospel truth about uh, what we got about what the Shek, uh general story is, but this is just from someone who's played it quite a bit. And what I've picked up kind of through my experiences. So if you guys have something that you know is right and I'm describing it wrong, feel free to let me know. But basically from my understanding is that the Shek are basically kind of like... If you guys have ever played Cthulhu Tech, which is a, which is a pretty neat tabletop. There's a, there's a alien race basically that the Maigo, which are the bad guys of Cthulhu Tech. One of the, ba- one of the bad guys in Cthulhu Tech. Basically made... To from a vault, they basically clone humans and then genetically alter them to make them an enforcer force. My my understanding is that Shek aren't all that different from that particular uh, Cthulhu tech, and I guess it's like Akadi or something. something, something I can't remember the exact name that they give them in that. But let's go ahead and have them sneak. We're gonna do some sneak training because we're gonna need to do some knockout. <laughs> we're gonna do some knockouts. I don't exactly remember what they were called in it. But from my understanding, Shek are often are very similar to them. Even have kind of the same warrior kind of culture uh, focus. Now, Cthulhu Tech, the story mostly with them revolves then further on about how they what do you call it, adjust to basically their whole, their whole traditions being kind of a lie to just get them to fight uh, on behalf of them, I go. So they have a they have a big personality crisis, whereas the Shek have no such thing. <laughs> they don't they don't have their person. I guess the closest thing to a personality crisis they're having is how much honor does it take before it becomes just too much too much. Uh, what do we call it ridiculousness. Ooh, we got a bone dog with a bounty hunter. Oh, those are some plated long boots. I think we can actually take. Doesn't seem like it, it's anybody's. Oh, it's a manhunter, but they were prisoners now, so yeah, we we ended up getting both the manhunters and the uh, heroes heroes league somehow uh, outlawed. So I guess we are, we're on our way. Oh, that's something we need. We need these prisoner shackles, but we need to make sure we have shoes on. We do. Okay, because if we pick it up without shoes on, it'll enslave us. They've learned anything. So we want to hold on to those prisoner shackles for multiple reasons. Uh, let's actually pick up elves. We're going to do some strength training real quick. We have some money. We have some food. I'm not really worried about starving to death. And money is the least of our, you know, least of our problems because we're going to go more of a stealth route anyway. Uh, but, which is kind of fun. Which is kind of fun because not many people have done a, uh, we'll call it, stealth, uh, Stealth check based things. A lot of times they use a Hiver or a Scorchlander. But check can actually do pretty nice itself. They just take a long time to level up, if I understand. But the, but one of the benefits is they have a higher health across the board. So if if things go wrong, you're not gonna you know you're gonna be able to not get your your legs taken out quite as easily, uh, which is pretty much a, will break a, a stealth build pretty quickly if your legs get taken out. Or any athletics or stealth build or anything like that. You'll get knocked out of the running pretty quick if your legs go out. Also, if, if a lot of people know about Conan the Barbarian, but they don't know about Conan the Thief. Conan the, uh, what do call it? Like, uh, the Brigand. Like, he, Conan basically, like, since we're inspired a little bit off of Conan, Conan in this run. Conan did a lot of, uh, what do call it? Sneaky, sneaky jobs. Like, in, especially if you look, if you look at, like... Uh, he had some all kinds of ones. Rogues in the House is a really good one. I don't know if that's the best example, but there's a lot of ones. Uh, God in a Bowl. There's uh, one called God in a Bowl where she's literally, I don't want to spoil it too much, but he's breaking into a museum. It won't spoil that much to say that. He's literally sneaking into the museum to steal stuff. So, I'm not a huge fan of necessarily stealing just rampantly in games, though, because it can get a little, 
you can end up making developers basically make it where you have to. That's why I have a hard time with playing Divinity Original Sin. I I I I can't, I can't play that game because there's only a limited amount of stuff, and I don't want to steal anything. And I don't want to steal anything because it just feels like so ridiculous. But then it feels like the game was made. It feels like the game was made for you to do it. It gives you so much opportunity to do it. <laughs> I don't know. In Kinchi, you could say it's similar, but at the same time, I just don't feel the pressure to steal in in Kinchi as much. So it's not as it's not um, so uh, so sad as it is in. Uh, Divinity Original Sin, where it feels like it's really wanting you to do it. That's my. That's really my main criticism. I think I had for that game was it felt like it. W- it was made. It was made that you were going to do everything at once. You're going to be a thief. You're going to be a fighter. You're going to be all, everything at once. You're going to have everyone in your party. If you're not the thief, you're going to have a party member who's a thief that will steal everything for you. That was my only problem with it, really. We are running after... I hope those guys are not Manhunters. They are not. But Kenshi, you know, it's not made, you know, it's exceedingly easy. Even though it is fairly easy once you get uh, some decent stealth. But it's not, like, in your face. Nearly as much. But back to the Shek. Back to the Shek while we do some stealth training... And strength training. So the... The Shek... Now, this is, like, the Shek basically, I think we're basically, gen- like, somehow genetically created by the skeletons. I could be wrong. I think the Shek had something to do, hold on, let me check this sound real quick. Oh. Did my feed cut I out? I think the Shek had something to do, hold on, let me check oh. this sound real quick. Oh, the what, like, like, the Shek, or, oh. They're, uh, hold on, let me actually, hold on, I can actually look it up, hold on. Cthulhu Tech Races, I think. Uh, what were they called? Nazadi. I thought, uh, for some reason I was thinking Akadi, but it's Nazadi. Nazadi from Cthulhu Tech. We're like, we're caught. We're, um, we're the ones that I'm thinking are a lot like the Shack. They're really neat to look into. Ironically, same color scheme, kind of, with like the, the like the black and white and like, the kind of gray. But they're more like they look more like I'd say like visually they look more like Squishlanders. They're really cool. I recommend because they're little tech. Uh, m- might not be for everybody. It's a different kind of game. You know, different. Uh, but um, and but and the later on books go from grim dark to noble bright, and some people might like that. Like it, it somehow for some reason, Cthulhu Tech goes from. Scary investigating or, you know, war kind of themes, right? To, if you go further on in the timeline, Gundam. <laughs> it just goes Gundam. <laughs> it just goes Gundam further on. And if you have, like... So, it, you, it's kind of, like... I think my favorite ideas for the game was playing with, um... Like, I, like there's a way of even playing as them I go, which seemed like a fun concept. How is our strength doing? I think it's probably going up pretty well, right? We're getting no strength training? Oh, no, we're getting 46%. Okay, never mind. I was going to say, we're not really... I was going to say, I can't believe we're getting none. In fact, that's mine while we're doing this. We're in that grindy bit of the game. The Nazadi, though. Hopefully that answers your question. Wild, uh, wild Dragon. <laughs> Hopefully that answers your question. May I missed you. But either way, the uh, we're called the if if uh, we're called for anyone who is curious, that's what the what they were called. Like I thought it was like I I, I couldn't remember the name off the top of my head, but a very very similar. If you look them up, the Shek always made me think of them because it, but the Shek uh, are a lot different in terms of with the bones and everything, the bone themes and like that. Which is actually I have a running theory that them and Bone Dogs are actually somehow connected. Whatever they did to people to make them like Shek, or to make make uh, humans into Shek, or whatever happened that has the Shek come about, I'm just like, okay, so there's a giant robot empire, right? That covered up most of the world. Robots don't just do stuff for no reason, right? 
skeletons, even if they have pers- personalities, right? Generally, even if they go crazy, they still have some kind of crazy reason why they're doing it, even if the logic is flawed. So my, my guess is, well, either Bone Dogs existed before, and there was somehow a reason why the Sheck ended up with bony protrusions as something that way, or they both came about at the same time. Because they both share the bone theme so greatly. Like they like there's the bone dogs and then the band of bones and everything and like the what call it the bony protrusions. But that that's literally guesswork right there. All my lore all my kinchy lore comes from what we'll call it investigation. Recall, I imagine there's, I think there's an investigation inside the game. I do not look at lore videos for Kinchi. Because even though I love lore videos, I just, recall, I feel like it defeats, I feel like it defeats the point to not share lore that is objectively, <laughs> that is objectively right. Does that make sense? I know that sounds weird, but what I'm saying is, is uh, recall, that to, I don't like the idea of presenting lore in an objectively right format, especially if I'm not the writer. And I'm not saying other people do, but I just, that's not something I like to do. So that's my guess. That's, if you guys have put together something different, that was my guess. Is that somehow, whatever caused the bone dogs is the same thing. You know, they're connected to the Sheck somehow. Probably, my guess. Because the Sheck were, from what I've gathered, were probably made by the, what do you call it? These skeletons. Because the ske- the humans made skeletons, if I remember correctly. Humans made skeletons, and there were even, like, big robots other than them. Which, you can find the evidence of that yourself. It's uh, pretty neat when you find it, but I don't want to spoil it for you. Let's run over here and also cook some meat. But when you find it, it's spooky. <laughs> it's spooky. But, um... That's the the Nazadi, I think, is the one I, I keep comparing them to. But the, um, but the main thing with the Shek is they they have like a culture where once you like get defeated in battle, they shave off your horns, um, and you're not allowed to be a warrior anymore. So, basically, before this game, they were basically just it's, considering how easy it is to get beat up in the the world of Kenshi. They were just lose, you know, losing pretty substantially because just attrition, <laughs> just from attrition. They were it's not, that they, it's not that they were terrible or anything. It was just that if you constantly throw yourself at things, kind of like how we were suffering in the swamp in the first season, you suffered a lot of attrition. It's that same thing. Eventually, you gotta pick your battles. You gotta pick of what you're gonna do, and that's kind of where a, a, a Stata, the Stone Golem comes in. However, I've never really liked. I've never really liked kind of how the Shek. Like I felt like okay, I like I never liked how Checker kind of like the default. Like a lot of people assume that they're the good of the three factions, because I think they're just kind of bandits. They steal your food. Like if you build in their te- if you build in the, anywhere near them, they'll go food tribute and steal all your food, which is more than which is technically if you have a lot of food, more tax than any other civilization. The Empire will tax you less. The uh, and the Holy Nation won't even tax you as they'll just talk to you. You just can't be anything other than a human or Scorchlander. Um, you just can't be a human or a Scorchlander. Oh, sorry, you can only be a human or a Scorchlander. Uh, but the Shek will basically wander, like, the the Shek will basically, or base, uh, the Shek are basically kind of just a total, they're each one a bad kind of government. They're each one a bad government. So, by no means, do you, like, when you go into the game, by no means immediately assume you can settle in Shek lands. I think I've mentioned this so much. Because as someone who has had, caught. As, as someone, as someone who we call it, who, who who who's spent most of their time just surprisingly in Czech kind of territory on my own, when I'm doing hunting, I travel. In my solo games, I typically stay in the the west side of the map, almost exclusively, because there's the best hunting on the west side of the map. In my my personal opinion, the best things that are most valuable to hunt, which are river raptors, and then you can go to the Czech towns and then down to Vane. If you go to Vane here, you want some good hunting spots, you can get beak things. In this kind of like this vein area, right? And you might go, beak things are scary. Heck yes, they are. They're definitely scary. But they have nests which will get you like a hundred thousand cats. <laughs> so, 
in a solo game in which your character once you, like in the late especially in late solo games you're like pushing like like it takes a lot long. a lot of people show characters with 100 that's not really really realistic to do in a quick amount of time unless you do something cheesy if you actually get your stats from actual fights and actual hunting you might be in like the 50s after quite a bit of a uh, of a of a run right unless you like do something that to accelerate it like taking a prisoner and just beating them up uh, which, if you're going to do that, do it to a th uh, Thrall, which is a headless skeleton, and just keep repairing the skeleton. And just knock off its limbs, and it's going to have some, de you know, find one with some decent skills, and then boom. You just hit them. <laughs> and, if, you know, they won't bleed out. You're pretty much 100% good. Now let's get L's to train some bit. Uh, some, some a little bit. Okay. Time your turn, L's. Show us what you got. Get that strength get that strength going. Yo, you have all the food, Els. Share. Share some, will you? There we go. I'm going hungry isn't actually a bad thing for if we want to boost their strength because it'll lower their strength. But I feel like that would be a needless danger to put them in. And I could just just do this another way too by hold on, I can give him the prisoner shackles to make him even way way down further. And we are friends with the we call it the shinobi thieves now, so there's that going for us too. So if we wanted to sell some stuff or do anything like that, we could. But right now we're just spending our time getting some of that stat, getting those stats to a semi acceptable level. We get a big bonus, though, a decent bonus, 0.1 bonus uh, to strength growth. So that is, that is a pretty nice thing. And toughness, we get a boost, too, but we get lower in dexterity. But, you know, if we use sharp-edged weapons, we'll level up in dexterity pretty fast anyway. Heavy weapons can be a little challenging to level up dexterity, so I'd recommend using something sharp on weak enemies, like a katana or something like that. Just so you get some of that dexterity up. Could even be a pole arm too. If you want to use uh, Naginata or something like that. Has some edged damage to it. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, oh, you're, the, uh, so while, Jack, so I, I was mostly referring to the, uh, what call it? I was, mo I, was, I was just mostly talking about lore. I wanted to, we, I knew that we were going to do a lot of, uh, what call it? kind of grinding today so i've just been rambling on about lore but i also was rambling about how the the uh, shack remind me a lot of a tabletop uh uh tabletop rpg uh, sp uh species called um nazadi which are basically like a they're basically the shack <laughs> they're basically the shack just the shack and the scorch scorchlanders mixed and that's not to be detrimental to the uh not to not to uh N not as an insult to the... Oop, are we getting attacked? No, we are not. What's going on over here? Okay, these are okay. These are actually Empire Guards. Oh, with more Manhunters. Hold on. We need that. Let's, get, let's go over here. Our strength training can wait. Put them down. Okay, we also pick up just skimmer bodies, which would actually be a quicker way to train it. Okay, hold on. That's a manhunter. Okay, manhunters aren't actually cool to uh, take apparently quite yet. But guess what? We can carry this and get some strength boost. We don't have to carry each other. Oh man, that's light though. They are light. They are super light. Now you can you gotta watch out about picking up people, just random people, because you can get a terrorism charge on you in this game you can actually and which is a pretty big fine in this game and you can end up with if you keep if your fine goes above i think ten thousand. you are uh it's it's uh out of luck you are you are pretty much permanently a uh a criminal in the eyes of whoever you're, you're with unless you get thrown into jail But yeah, that's my theory. I know I have a little bit of a delay, so if it seems like I'm answering real late, I have a delay to make it the uh, the stream run a little bit nicer, kind of run a little nicer. So 
If it seems like I'm always really delayed. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Let's run to the bar and sell some of the stuff. Let's sell that. Oh, we want to sell L's stuff, not him. There we go. Sell the shoes. Go ahead and sell some of this copper. And sell this iron stick. That's probably better than our iron stick, but we'll, we'll just put that at the moment. Right there. Let's run them around. We can get some athletics up, too. Turn around. Get some, some training in. Oh, we, I forgot. We need to do assassination training. We need to do assassination training because assassination training will give us... Um, we'll be able to knock people out. Now, remember, this for this particular one, run, we're not going to play super fair. By, by super fair, I mean we're not going to... Uh, be kind of the conventional military force that we were in the last one. I mean, this is a tale of vengeance, not a you know, not a tale of uh, of setting up a mission in a swamp. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna definitely make use of that assassination skill to maybe an o abusive extent while we been to destroy Stoat. Because once you can knock people out, you are a monster <laughs> in, in this game. Once you can knock people out um, reliably and not get caught, it's literally just a matter of how much stuff can you dump qu quick enough off of your enemy. Because then you just like just ditch all their gear onto the ground and either sell it a defenses, uh, who you know, which are an option. Or you could be use the gear depending on who you took it from, as a disguise or whatever you'd like to use it with. Or just simply, if you're destroying them, just wearing their gear because you know you don't like them anyway, right? So it's always an option. How we're doing on an assassination? Speaking of, oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Actually, someone actually starting to like us a little. Who's, who's over there liking us a little? United Cities. That's ironic. It's because I think we turned in two bounties. Alright, so we're sending 18 strength. Which is... It's alright for starting. It's alright for starting. Our, our, our toughness could get a little better, too. Um, right now, we, we're really kind of pathetic combat skills. Because we haven't really gotten into a real fight. Assassination. Now, this should take me to assassination like 20 something, right? 19. It should take us to assassination 19. What we're going to do is we're going to want to knock somebody out and take all their gear and fist fight them. <laughs> That's my plan. Is we're going to knock someone out, take them off somewhere, and fist fight them with no gear on. Okay, now, we could use a weapon later on, but. I'm gonna say that they still have some rudimentary level of uh, of fairness, and will generally fight them. But I won't try to abuse it too much. I'll, uh, I'll once I beat them once, I'm probably going to uh, dump them somewhere. They get to fight for their life. If they can win, they can leave. If they lose, then it's done. They're over. It's two two uh, two kinchy dwellers enter. One kinchy dweller leave. Or at least one leaves conscious because we're using fists An another good way of getting some uh whoop, oh hold on oh free money out there hold on. let's actually let's see if we can attack the skimmer come on let's go oh where is it here we go let's attack that one that one's closer See if we can help out. Okay, that was quick. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, okay, now I'm, I'm looking at the one I'm holding. And that's one for uh, elves to carry. What are you doing, elves? You're so far back. Take all that. Now you pick that one up. Because we need strength training. So we need to carry as much as we can. 
And we're pretty, you know, we're pretty safe where we are. Oh, let's go get that. Not really too worried. Oh, there's another body over there. Free money raining down over here. Now, we need to watch out because there is another recruit I wanted to get in uh, Bark. So we can't get too much money or we're going to be in some uh, trouble there. I know we're limited on backpacks, too. So I'm not going to get a backpack, even though I really want a backpack. Because uh, I want to get all the people who kind of have something against the UC. Um, into a group t when we do the uh, Path of Vengeance. <laughs> so we we, go out, we, uh, we need to actually get them into the team. They, I think it's that they just don't like it if you're already so well off. Or they just don't think you need them. I don't remember exactly what it was. That restricts them. But they won't travel with you if you have too many backpacks, too many recruits, uh, too many people in your squad. Or simply just too much money. I think it's like if you have over a hundred thousand cats. Which, funny enough, in one of my in one of my campaigns, that is exactly what happened. That is exactly what happened. I sold those beak thing eggs and immediately ended up going to there. And I was like, "Oh, come on!" Because I literally just made all that money. Went to the new city to see if there was anything worth buying there. And they're like, "You got too much money." I'm like, "Ah, oh, no." So again, most of my my discoveries have been. Through exploration, uh, for better or worse, unfortunately. So sometimes it's worse, or for worse. Is there a weapon shop in here? Because I want, I could buy a sharp weapon for L's to, L, or L's to use. In the meanwhile, though, I don't think there is a weapon shop here. If there is. I'm not think. I'm not remembering it. There's travel gear. I'm not sure if Shobutai has a weapon shop. Oh, it has a ranger shop, but I don't think it has a sword shop. Headgear shop. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're I think we're out of luck weapon wise. Yeah, it looks like we're out of luck weapon wise, so we'll have to wait. Or steal it. <laughs> or steal one eventually. And then meanwhile, let's get that strength up. Let's get that strength going. Let's go ahead and get some uh, got copper on us. How you, two people can work this. Come on. Stay stealth so I can tell if someone's coming by. We technically are a lot of armor stolen as it is. Kind of curious the guards will take it, even though it's not stolen from them. It's stolen by people they don't like. Is that actually? I don't think I've been stopped a lot with actual stolen gear. I think I've always, I've mostly, at least, mo I've mostly always had. Generally, either I wiped it by selling it to a fence, there's a, or uh, or some other method, and then because there's a few, there's a few methods you can you can get rid of the the um, stolen tag. But the the most gameplay fair is by selling it to a fence and buying it back. If you do do the dye trick of where you can dye you dye your armor different colors, then I would throw it into a weapon or item furnace and then take it out and it will be clean. But I would I would I would I would uh, have an honor rule not to use that that much unless uh we call it unless it just bothers you to see the stolen tag. I'd only use it for if you actually own the gear initially, because if you put the it doing the dying trick of changing the color of your gear, it will throw a stolen tag on it, um, and it might be from a faction that you're friends with. So, you know, to me, I think that there's no reason why <laughs> there's no reason why you could you couldn't clean it then because it is yours. You're just changing the color. We also we're also getting a little hungry. So there's a bunch of tricks in Kinchi. A lot of ones that I don't tell you about. Um another fun trick is having customizable prisoners. You can custom you can be customizable prisoners by uh if you chop off the limbs of all of all your prisoners, you can have uh you can choose how hard you want them to be able to fight you 
by by putting on different cybernetic limbs on them. So if you want a real challenge, throw in some like really good good limbs. You know, and you can also make it that if they fall fall over. If you're worried about them trying to escape or get away, you just take all the limbs away. <laughs> You don't have to. You don't always have to have them lay on a table while you hit them. I, I I always like for my training. I typically if if I do like if I do like in my solo games kidnap a character to fight them, which I've I've stopped ever since I started the hunter solos. Once I which is my favorite kind of solo play is like doing like a, a solo hunter, just because it's it just fits the game really well. There's so many hunting focused weapons that you really miss out otherwise. And it's profitable. It is very profitable, in fact, to be a hunter in Kinchi. Especially if you're solo. Because eventually you get to get to the point of where you're just killing whole river raptor gangs on your own. Right now I have a character who's solo who can kill all, an entire river raptor gang uh, solo without like getting basically hurt at all. So, <laughs> so and, and without, like, you can technically... And th with crossbows, I could do that significantly earlier. But crossbows go into, well, they walk so slow, it just, it's just a matter of time. I'm talking a melee character. I, I have a melee character that can, I, that can do it. Um, and then still have enough inventory space. And still keep his bags on so he can just stack in the... Uh, what, the... The, the uh, skins. Because that's something you have to consider if you're doing Hunter is traveling all your traveling stuff. Especially if you're not playing with uh, pack animals. Because you have to consider how you're traveling. So over there. We have room for one more. Okay, let's run them. Let's run them back. But we'll do a, before we do that. Let's run to the. Well, let's run to the other side. I think. Let's find where the fire is. Or is the fire on this side? It's on this side, right? Oh no, that's a that's just an unconscious samurai. Now we could take that guy's sword and then clean it at the fence. I don't know if it's worth the risk. There's only an uh, 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 yeah, it's not worth the risk. There's a chance that they stop me and get angry if they see the stolen sword. So I think I'm going to play it safe. Also, right now, the guards are kind of throwing themselves at things on my behalf. So I'm more than happy to let them take that. The, the brunt of that. Just run into this bar. Sell our stuff. Or actually, no, no. Let's, let's actually... Again, actually, let's go back over here. And get that meat cooked. And then once we cook the meat, we can... Um, we can just travel around and get our stats up. Because our stealth should be, like, rocketing from going through a populated town. As you can see, it's with a .8 modifier, by that means like a, it actually lowers it. We're down by, like, 20% growth. And we're still rocketing in terms of stealth. Just because we have a lot of people. I think it would even be higher if we were on hostels. But what else is at 18? Is it 9? So considering the negatives we have toward it, we are going up fairly quick. And that we haven't really been uh, focusing down stealth. But I might, I might try to... I might... Whoa, whoa. What is going on? Is that... Whoa, no, no, that's an actual... Hold on. That thing's awake. Hold on, get that thing. Crawl catch, get that thing. Okay, hold on. That thing is critical, but it's gonna, I think, knock him down before he has much. Okay, drop. Go ahead, drop that thing. Put down. And just go into block, and then L is going to block. And wait for that thing to bleed out. Oh my gosh, that is not really required. Oh boy, don't lose an arm. Let's try to. Let's try to. Heal up while while uh, L's shares some of the attacks. Oh, no. okay, drop that, please. Dodging these guys seem pretty 
difficult. It's probably because their, their attack is significantly higher than our defense. Oh, there's a leg hit. I don't, I don't like to see those leg hits. Okay, you know what? Let's run inside. Let's run to the guards and then let's help the guards fight him. We're getting back up. Oh, wait, hold on. He's running away. We don't want you to run away. Hold on. No, we can heal. We're not running away from you, thing. Go ahead, Skimmer. We're, we're, we're not afraid of you. We're just trying to... We're caught. We're just uh, being smart about how we go about it. Come on. Come after me. Here, taunt. Elves, taunt. Oh, boy. We're taking in some hits. Some nasty hits. Its stomach is still... It's bleeding at minus... Okay, its death is at 203. And it still hasn't reached... Okay, arms are too bad. Arms are too bad. Run. Okay, run. Draw, draw it to the end and we're caught. This is called a... We're caught. A fake retreat. <laughs> this is called a... We're caught. A lot of early... A lot of early cultures did it. Basically, we're running this monster into a trap. Oh boy, he's like... Oh boy, he's gonna be in some trouble. Pick up. Ah, oh! Just run, run to the... God, run to this. Right here. Oh, we're getting hit hard. Oh, it's... Oh, his arm's gonna go. Okay, hold on. Put him down. Try to get away. Try to get away. Get to the guards. Okay, he's unconscious. Just run. Run to the guards. Oh, I want to get that thing to the guards. It's not a false retreat unless we get him to go to the guards. Okay, there we go. We'll get him to go to the guards. We're taunting him from a distance. Pick up. Come on. We're just shouting at him. Come on. Come at us. We're not afraid of you. Come on. Come on. We're not afraid of you. You're, come, come on. We're not afraid of you, uh, skimmer. We know you're hurt. hurt hurting like us. And you're gonna, you're gonna have a regret the day you skimmed for the first time, skimmer. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> um, this isn't good. Elves, we're gonna need you to get up quickly. I mean, someone's gonna come in and enslave us pretty soon. Come on, Els! We need you to do it! Oh no. Oh, it's the thieves, thank gosh, thank you! Shinobi thieves coming in for the res rescue! <laughs> oh, thank gosh! Okay. First aid, Crawl Cash. If you see, uh, we're calling them coming by, pick them up. But the beast has been defeated, so we won! No need to feel bad about victory. We have definitely beat him. And on our own merits too. Wink wink. <laughs> we trap we did we call it exactly our goal, so thus we are victorious in combat. Pick up uh Crawcast, shall we? No shame in being the oh god, no shame in being bait. If the bait works, then you're victorious vicariously. <laughs> See that's Crawlcash's game. He's long run. Unlike Larkash, who is all about not falling in battle, right? And went back to save Rikot, save uh Rikot. 
went back to uh, save Crawl the dog from starving, but ultimately succumbed to his injuries. Crawl Kesh is a big picture guy. He understands that sometimes you gotta break a few eggs, I guess. <laughs> Even if that egg is him. <laughs> There we go. Let's run here. I kind of like this. I, I, I actually think a Band of Bones campaign would be really fun. Like to maybe even evolve this beyond to a ba full Band of Bones once we get Vengeance would be kind of really fun. Especially since Band of Bones are all about Shek who lost in battle. We're caught. We refused to give up the sword. You know what I'm saying? It'd be kind of a it'd be kind of like a reject it would be kind of a rejection of the we're caught. Kind of a rejection of, of that kind of tradition. More about uh, more about we're caught more uh, about perseverance. These Crow Cash is basically, basically throwing himself against uh, an entire nation by ultimately when he attacks Stout, right? In order to uh, in order to avenge his brother. So I imagine that he's going to have a few more Pyrrhic victories or even a few losses on his future. He's, even though the skimmer died this time, someone might get away in the future. It might not be such a... And what might not end up being a, a full on uh, an ultimate victory yeah we need to start getting some food we are actually just cooking our food some recovery coma elves go ahead get some food oh no actually hold on they got him um actually we're not using that much food and actually being a little hungry will help our strength uh level up so go ahead and just rest for the moment get our statistics back up Hmm. Let's see here. I think that I think that the best yeah, I think that the best mode of idea here is, is that when we get these guys healed up is to probably keep fighting some skimmers. And but the thing is with this strength we're gonna probably sell these and just try to rely on strength for um, actually fighting the skimmers after after we do a little bit more strength training. Because once we get to where our in full inventory doesn't give us a full 50 then we can actually probably just get more from just strength training and then once we're like reasonable enough to be able to kill skimmers with some decent like amount uh, it should be it should be um good that should be a good amount before we really try to start taking people out <laughs> with um, and trying to knock them out somewhere and drop them off somewhere, but I think we're gonna the fight, fight the slavers first. Because ultimately the slavers made it more difficult for the we call it for Larkesh to escape. So part of stout part of the stout debacle is on their um, is in their hands, or was on their hands. But his legs are alright, so that's why I'm sending him out to run and grab that. Actually, hold on. Can I sneak and knock these guys out? These are outlaws. They'll see me do it. <laughs> this is in broad daylight. Oh, that's a friend of ours. We don't want to knock him out. Let me go back over to this guy. Also, we want to turn off block for both these guys so we don't uh, 
mess anything up. Our toughness should be insane, though. Uh, not insane. 7-11. I'm going to say, because we've been hit a lot. But that's not quite enough. Let's go ahead and sell all this stuff and maybe even get... Sell all this stuff and cook our food. Because I think we're, we're trying to hold too much. So we can't actually, uh... It's preventing us from getting more money. And we want gear. A band of bones, and maybe some, even some bone dogs. Like a band of bones, but then we mix it in with having some bone dogs. Yeah, they're fun to have. Albeit not necessarily the best, because they can't dodge. That's the only problem, I think, really with any animal in this game, is they can't really dodge. So their upper limit is kind of hindered. Bulls can do a charge, which is really cool. But uh, I just noticed the bars here in, in the UC have way more money than some of, the, some of the other bars I've seen. Who's talking over there? I think they're talking about hivers. They're saying... I think they're, they're bad-talking hivers over there. Which is kind of weird because, you know, the bartender's one, so... I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't want to be doing that, you know, bad-talking the guy who's, you know, got access to... Ooh, no, I don't want to buy that. I want to hold on to these prisoner shackles because I have some. I, I want to throw it on to people, and whenever we get them, these prisoner shackles can be uh, useful. They won't count as our prisoner if we throw prisoner, prisoner shackles on them, but uh, it would be funny to throw them on some of the people that we're fighting. Consider a little bit um, uh, consider uh, it a little bit of an unbalance in favor of the fact that. At least we'll do that to the stout guards, considering that they made whoever have to try to fight while having shackles on him. Let's run. Get some of this food cooked. Do we already have any food in there? No. There you go. Let's see how we... Let's go ahead and eat. I think... Crawlcash was getting, Crawlcash was getting lean. Crawlcash was getting real lean. I think you might need more of the food. We'll divide it three three. How about that? There we go. Let's run. We'll just see what we'll call it. We'll have to see what challenges show up. Because I think what we need to do is we need to fight skimmers. But the problem is skimmers are really, really high like high statistics for for where we are at. I mean, 20 is not necessarily super high. But it's, it's high for the two characters we have. Yeah, let's sneak, actually. And go ahead and use this opportunity. To maybe even knock out these guys. <laughs> Speaking of, see if we can knock one out and take one with us. They have no chance of knocking out that guy. Okay, hold on. They, these guys don't see us, so. Oh, okay, hold on. Let's go normal play. Oh, no, no, you'll see us, you'll see us, you'll see us. Go away. <gasps> Too many people! I mean, you're a drifter? And that would be breaking the law, so we want to be careful. Hold on, what's your, what's your stealth? Th uh, are you already back up to 19? I don't think you're at 19 assassination yet, so let's go back in, actually, and then try to work on that a little more. Go back to the thief area. Work a little bit on assassination. Get assassination in 19, and then we'll try and knock out some of those outlaws. Don't worry, it's only a it's a it's a harmless process in which we knock them out, but then make sure that they don't get enslaved. <laughs> because while we do want to just knock them out, we're not gonna we're at least gonna try to be decent decent people and not get them enslaved as well. Because that's a good way to get enslaved in the the 
Okay, hold on. They're both working on that. So you two work on how to get out of cages. Okay, okay, he's free. Man, that arm does not look like it's doing good. That arm looks like it's actually... That, that arm looks kind of sad. It's flipping around. Trying to do like a little palm strike. How's your arm doing? It's still minus 22. I'm very surprised neither of them lost a limb, to be honest. They would have. I'm sure they would have. If, if they weren't if they weren't Sheck because Sheck have a higher health um, health bracket for limbs as you can see they have 125 for everything if they were Hiver would have been like immediately these Hivers have like 50 health per limb for a large amount of them with the exception of like the soldier has like the head is like 120 like 150 125 something like that skeletons have, skeleton things have like two skeletons have like 200 for every single thing. If you want to talk about being able to cheese the game, I if you want to if you want to like okay, start anywhere but the Holy Nation as a skeleton, and congratulations, you won Kinchi. <laughs> uh, start anywhere but the because you uh, okay, and and start anywhere near a place with a repair bench as a skeleton, other than the Holy Nation, which pretty much the Holy Nation doesn't have any in there. And congratulations, you won the game. <laughs> Because you could just make money infinitely. You never have to buy, buy food. You nev never have to like go out and fight for food. You just go work, come back, work, come back, work, come back. And extremely like it would just wipe out all the micromanagement that you have to do. And you'll be twice as much as any human, twice as much limb uh, resistance as any human. And you can do martial arts without taking any limb damage. So, but you will be limited in your armor. But it's like the easiest start of any of, of anything is, is playing as a skeleton. Easiest start starting starting race period is skeleton. I'd say after that, it goes into I'd say Scorchlander ahead of Sheck. I'd say Scorchlander is actually easier than Sheck just because you can go into a holy nation. You already have you have combat uh, st combat skills boosted your combat skills are boosted uh experience wise you'll learn them faster um and you're not so food hungry like shekar shek use uh, eat through food significantly faster as you can see we're already hungry again our hunger rate is 1.25 there's no more, baseline is human is one point this is 1.0 so we're way higher upkeep than if we were a squad of humans However, if we did do Band of Bones, we have to consider whether we're going to have humans or all just all Shek. Because Band of Bones are mostly just Shek. So we'll see. Let's, I think we're, what we're doing on the, I'll call it the assassination. 14? You know, maybe we might even just sp split up a little bit and have a uh, not crawl catch, but elves do some of this after he finishes this next level. So that way, both of them can do a little bit of assassination. Whoop! There you go. <laughs> He's got broken. They both got a broken arm. Just different arms. Oh no, both have a broken right arm. I think the left arm technically has a higher statistic chance to get hit in Kinchi. I want to say I, I, a lot of people have told me that the left arm is is most likely to be the one to be get cut off. That could just be just random chance. Just the people I've talked to. But either way, let's talk. But let's while they're doing that, let's go ahead and mention more about the Sheck. Sheck are cool. Sheck are cool. But um, the Sheck Nation, much like the Holy Nation and the UC, are all all pretty messed up. <laughs> They're all pretty messed up. One's like a murderer who's only not murdering you because they know that they'll get in trouble, which is kind of the, the Shek Nation. The Shek Nation is basically like, uh, let's stop murdering people for a little bit because we're getting hurt, and we'll go back right back to doing it afterwards, right? And there's less about the tradition and more about just sustainable killing. <laughs> Whereas, like the you could at least say with the. Uh, 
the chosen, the crawls chosen, or the berserkers, or all the other ones have different kind of perspectives. Which, like, you could argue, like, one of them has it that's tradition. Another one is like, well, you know, they're saying we can't be warriors just because you know we've lost once, but we can still do it. And they play them off as bandits, which is always I always find funny that they play the band of bones as bandits. Uh, the Shek Nation. But I'm like, they're the exact same. The only difference is they lost once. <laughs> the only difference is they lost uh, They lost in battle. And were publicly humiliated. Which, if anything, makes them more... If anything, more noble by being able to get back onto the horse. Because the Shek Nation are bandits, <laughs> basically. So, band of bones being bandits aren't much different. The only difference is that they're just like the we call it, they're just like the they're just like sustainable focus bandits. The uh, Shek Nation, the Holy Nation are del like are mostly pretty much just delusional, but sometimes nice, sometimes insane delusional. Because like, the, okay, think of it this way: Th this is technically a fictional universe, so there's no way this is a fictional universe, so there is absolutely no way to stand and say whether they're right or wrong. Because if Ocran is a thing in the fictional universe, actually turns out to be a whole big thing, and not just some kind of robot entity, then technically they're right. <laughs> then technically they're right. If in Kinchi, the Ocran is a literal person, that would make the Holy Nation right. If they're not an actual thing, then they're delusional, but sometimes helpful. And then the UC are just greedy, greedy, greedy. <laughs> they're like more mafia than bandits. They're more like a like mafia kind of organized crime, and uh, recall it. and check and check um, the Shek Nation is kind of like people realizing that they could do organized crime and never thought of it before. They were just bandits. They were like, "Hey, we could just be organized crime and just rob people and say we it, it's our stuff." <laughs> so, so um, don't worry about trying to find the good guys in Kenshi. You'll never find them. The closest thing are the anti-slavers uh, to good guys. If you wanted to play a good guy faction, I think I've mentioned this so many times that the anti-slavers are the closest thing to being good guys. Uh, the closest, uh, closest thing to being good guys in Kenji. But even then, they're kind of like they're kind of like the joke about RPG heroes in uh, in video games about how they're going in doing all these things. But the joke is, is that you're like, you know, a lot of this would really mess up the ecosystem. They're not really kind of filling any political void or any, and then they disappear like I've completed my master quest off I go to another sunset and goes off and they're like well now who's going to be in charge <laughs> so there, I guess you could say that that's the, that's the, the flaw of the anti-slavers uh, the anti -slavers. Is they're just uh, they're like the, the stereotypical RPG hero of I didn't really think of what I was going to do after winning <laughs> I mean, the tech hunters are pretty cool, though. I mean, I, if, if anything, the tech hunters are low-key kind of nice. Nobody mentions them a lot. I don't know why. Because they're the closest thing to being kind of low-key nice. Because I mean, they, they, they purposely try to go out of their way not to mess with the Holy Nation. If you ever have been up to um, World's End, which is up here. Oh, I'm losing my balance. Over and over here. They basically have... Ocarins, like basically like the Grand Phoenix statues outside, just just to make sure they don't get in combat with the Holy Nation. So they'd go out of their way to make sure they don't have to fight them. Even though they they're not friends with them, they 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 try to be diplomatic. I mean, they're nicer than the Shack. I they, I think again I, they're nicer than the Shack Nation. I think that the the the, the to me Shack Nation falls under Band of Bones. Band of Bones is nicer. And you might go, well, they attack you on sight. But I'm like, yeah, but their long-term goal is to kind of be warriors and they're kind of fighting for survival. Like hungry bandits. They're like hungry bandits up there. Meanwhile, Shek are low, the Shek Nation, right, is lower because they're like, they're only not killing you because they want to kill you later and they'll know they'll lose if they do it now. That is not nice guy material. That's not nice guy. <laughs> That's not nice guy material right there. That's not, hey, I'm the good guy. It's, I'm not killing you now because if I do, I'll die. But I will kill you later. <laughs> That's basically Shek Nation. So, that's why I've never, I've never played as friends of the Shek Nation. Ever since they, ro like, they robbed the food. 
I'm going to mention it every episode. <laughs> that same thing. I think I mentioned every episode that I don't like them since they got because of their food tribute. But I like the other ones more because even though they're kind of stupid, theoretically, because they are going to get themselves destroyed, I rather stupid uh, neutral than lawful evil. <laughs> I rather stupid neutral than lawful evil. Because you have to think that the the like the at least the crawls thing is thinking it's tradition and it's their way, whereas the other one is like. No, I like the killing part, but let's give her the tradition thing. <laughs> That's basically the we call it the Shek Nation. So, this is this has been your anti-Shek we call it Nation propaganda today. <laughs> because I just see so many good things about them. I'm like, but they're the bad guys too. They're bad guys just as much as the others. This is what you get when there's grind. You get into a philosophical video game conversation. Uh oh, we have run out of time. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Cut. We will be getting into some combat soon. At least not yet, though. But that basically, that's my, that's my ranking. If anyone's ever curious about how, if you're going into the Kinchi world for the first time, I'd rank... In terms of good to evil, I'd I'd rank all the major nations on the bottom in evil. <laughs> I'd rank, rank all the major like the only thing, like even skin bandits are just nuts. Like, and if that depends on where you consider evil is. If the skin bandits are deluded, so they're not as evil because they're not knowingly evil. And I, the, the skin bandits would be like at all the Shek bandits, like all the Shek bandit things of going, but it's tradition. And maybe Holy Nation is a little higher just because they're delusional. But only the delusional one. Like only the, the delusional ones. They get bumped up if, they get bumped up if Ocarin's an actual thing. If Ocarin's an actual thing, then they get bumped up pretty high. Because then in the Kinchin universe that is just how things work. Because generally, determining what's a good guy in a universe is kind of difficult. Because you have to think about what your, de what your determination of good is. And what, what, uh, what, what you're going to take your stand on. Because all, all of Kinchi factions are pretty, pretty rough. Actually, hold on. Is there maybe one faction I could say that is kind of innocent? Nomads. Nomads are pretty innocent. They're not. They're not. Uh, we'll call it. Nomads are pretty innocent. Mercenaries Guild is, I guess, neutral. The tech hunters would probably be neutral. <laughs> I'd sit there. I'd sit there. Tech hunter. Actually, you know, Western Hive is pretty nice. Uh, albeit weird, they're not. They're not bad. So I would say what the maybe they're all sitting in the middle and then anti slavers. Um The biggest problem with the Flotsam Ninjas again is is that they're they're high, they're they're somewhat up in neutral because they're just reactionary to the situation. But at the same time they'll get bumped down if Ocarin's a thing. If Ocarin's a thing, Holy Nation jumps up. And if Ocarin's a thing, Flotsam Ninjas drop down. <laughs> If Ocarina's not a thing, they get boosted up. Flotsam Ninjas get boosted up. And Holy Nation gets bumped down. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> is Ocarina just one giant AI? Is Ocarina a narco going to turn out to be some giant AI? That's that's my guess. My guess is just how he's looking at... Well, why is there green weather? There's a green wind. There for a second. My guess is it's going to turn out that they're, they were like a... Ooh, we are starving. We're definitely starting to starve. Well, we'll eat next time. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Had a lot of fun. We call it. Leave your. Leave, feel free to. We call it. Leave. Uh, leave any faction. We call it faction related. <laughs> faction related commentary. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not giving a. 
a stout of the stone golem a chance. But it's but pretty but uh you know that's the great greatest part about Kinchi is it's shaped off your personal experiences and if you don't watch lore videos, uh, and find the lore in yourself like find the lore yourself through experience, that's what you get is you get these um you get that you get your your lore does that make sense you get your lore and that to me is what Kinchi's about it's not about knowing what's hands down how it it was how it is or how it was but um making your guesses and finding your heroes to pick out uh, in the story amongst a bunch of absolute <laughs> jerks. <laughs> because that's the one thing they'll, they'll maintain in Kinchi is, is that every character is in some way a jerk to somebody. Even Tin Fist, you could argue, is a jerk to Catlon from Catlon's perspective. <laughs> so... <laughs> Go ahead. And Catlon's a whole other story. So I hope you guys enjoyed... Give give journeying through Kinchi a chance. Give it give it a chance. Go ahead and uh, call it. If you're new to the game, don't take my word on lore as as uh, call it as a uh, as gospel. Uh, find your own truth in in Kinchi's in Kinchi's world. See what you think. You call it. If, you know. See what you think. See who you find the good guys are. Who you think the bad guys are. Uh, play it out. And see the good guys stab you in the back. <laughs> because that's about 90% of the time. What it, because in our Akronite campaign, we got thrown into slavery by the Akronites, which don't t- normally take slaves. But they only capture uh, religious prisoners, and they throw bandits occasionally into rebirth. But they capture, they, they and I think it was a bug, they threw one of our guys who were helping them fight bandits into rebirth. They threw Load, our main character. And he had to escape. So... You know, it it makes a better story that way. It just does. Uh, it just does to me, to me. But that's my personal perspective on it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Had a lot of fun. I caught. See you guys next time. I think so. Today is Wednesday, right? Yeah, it's Wednesday. So tomorrow we're doing Dark Dire. We're doing Dark Dire tomorrow. We're doing Dark Dire, and we are going to. Uh, and then Friday, we are probably going to do uh, Star Wars. Again. I'm probably gonna do Star Wars again. Uh, I'm thinking also of I'm thinking I'm thinking also like I'm gonna try to because we're getting close into the Star Wars one that we're going to make a um a flashpoint. We're gonna run into a flashpoint I think they call them flashpoints. But um I'm gonna see if I can make a flashpoint party. Uh, with some friends and see if we can stream going through a flashpoint and see if we can get some some gnarly, gnarly acts of goof, goofy Sith action going on. <laughs> We're going, there's some funny things you can do in Flashpoints as a Sith. Even though we've been playing, uh, we caught as more of the low key Sith. We've been playing Deodorous <laughs> as more of the low key Sith. The kind of nice at first, but really just wants to be in charge kind of Sith. All right, so see you guys later. I'm rambling on. Have a good one. Hope you had a great evening. Hope you have a great morning (laughs) tomorrow. And uh, see you next time. All right. Bye.